20 years before the year that it is currently, a very peculiar event occurred on the island of Wano. The residents of the flower capital flocked to watch a most unusual execution. Kozuki Oden, a former daimyo of Wano, was sentenced to boil to death for the crime of vaguely defined treason, and what happened next would change the world forever. This is the story of the most important global figure that no one has ever heard of. This is the story of a man who fought an emperor, sailed with another, and is the very reason why the pirate king Goldie Roger was awarded his infamous title. This is the story of a man who was born to boil. And when I say he was born to boil, I don't mean that as some sort of ironic twist. Because Kozuki Oden was born from a seed of his father, Kozuki Sukiyaki, with assumedly the help of his mother, Kozuki does not exist. Oden's mother has never been mentioned in any way, shape or form. Meanwhile, Oden itself is a classic Japanese stew, featuring an assortment of fish cakes, deep fried tofu, mochi, hard boiled eggs, konyaku, kombu, and daikon, all simmered in a soy sauce based dashi broth. So already planning his son's future poetic death, Sukiyaki saw fit to name his son after boiling food product. To be fair, I'm told that the name shortlist was either Odin or Chicken Noodle Soup. And young Chicken Noodle Soup's infamy would begin 12 months after his womb eviction when he threw his wet nurse to the ground. 12 months later, he was swift enough to catch two hairs at once. And by the age of four, he defeated a bear with a very large rock, thus setting a new One Piece world record. As the previous bear beatdown title was held by Charlotte Lin Lin at the age of five. By age six, Odin was spending vast quantities of the national budget in the quote, pleasure hall, Thus implying what, what we all know it's implying, but he was six, he was six. What could he possibly have been doing in there? By age eight, Odin had discovered not only alcohol, but the magic of alcohol induced fights, leading to him at age nine being blacklisted by the Yakuza run gambling den. And as revenge by age 10, Odin set fire to the den and was promptly arrested. Odin's first decade on this planet was more eventful than any of our entire lives will ever be. And it only gets more insane from here. During his time in prison, Odin quote, blossomed, working in the quarry and would rise to the rank of chief stonemason, with prison actually rehabilitating him to some degree. I say some because when he was 14, Odin flooded the flower capital of Wano and unsuccessfully attempted to ride the flood out of the country. A warrant was then issued for his second arrest. When he was 15, Odin would go on to cause an entire civil war after abducting many wives, mothers, and daughters from the capital to form his own private harem, thus sparking an armed response from the husbands, sons, and brothers in an event that would become known as the Harem. War. And by age 18, Odin's father had had enough. Odin had become far, far too much trouble, and it was clear that he was never going to be in a position to inherit the title of Shogun. So a formal document was drafted where Sukiyaki disowned his son. Now, at the exact same time that this letter was being written, Odin had intruded on a local funeral and was eating a pot of Odin on the burning corpse of the deceased. That's just the kind of guy that Odin is. And I really don't think any other moment in the series sums him up better than this one. To be fair, this was Odin's way of paying paying respect to a fallen friend. However, shortly thereafter, Odin would become embroiled in a giant pig-related catastrophe, where he actually did something kind of heroic and saved the capital from certain destruction. Now that didn't stop him being disowned by his father, but it did earn him some very key admirers. Having witnessed and, look, let's be completely upfront, caused the giant pig problem, a young Kinemon and an equally as young Denjiro became enamored with the strength of Odin, immediately vowing to become his disciples, an idea that Odin was not at all particularly thrilled with, and from here, Odin was like an immunocompromised patient on a plague ship. He just couldn't stop catching things. With the names of several of those things being Izo, Kiku, Raizo, and Kanjiro, each of whom firmly affixed themselves to the belt of Odin, much like a Pokemon to its trainer, which only became a more appropriate metaphor when he began catching actual creatures. One day on a beach, Odin found a cat, a dog, and a fish to add to his growing collection, and even went on to have his very own gym battle against leader Ashura Doji. Beating Ashura not only turned him into an ally, but it marked a change for a very specific part of Wano known as Kuri. Prior to this, it was a lawless zone that Ashra was in charge of, but Odin's leadership swiftly reformed Kuri into a functional society. A fact that astonished and impressed Sukiyaki so much that he granted his son the title of Daimyo of Kuri, with Odin's followers becoming his vassals. A Daimyo for us Western swine is kind of like a feudal lord. So Odin by this point has had a proper riches to rags to riches again story, but that was still not enough for Odin. Something we have yet 
yet to touch on is that throughout his entire life, Wano was simply too small for Odin, and he had dreamed of setting out to see the world for as long as he'd been capable of cognitive thought. In fact, at this stage, he'd made at least 38 recorded attempts to leave Wano, each ending in abysmal and sometimes hilarious failure. But a day would certainly come when Wano would no longer be strong enough to contain Odin. And that day was this one, when later that year, the Whitebeard Pirates became shipwrecked and washed up at the Kuri port. And smelling the pungent yet irresistible scent of opportunity, Odin immediately physically assaulted Whitebeard and asked to join his crew. To which Whitebeard replied, yeah, nah. Because whilst respecting Odin's strength, Whitebeard knew that he wasn't the type of man to follow. And having been part of a crew of leaders with the Rocks Pirates, Whitebeard was a little bit less than eager to recreate those particular glory days. But if the story up until this point has taught us anything, it's that Odin couldn't care less. He could, however, be careless, which he did by latching onto the Moby Dick as the Whitebeard Pirates set sail, resulting in being brutally dragged out to sea by the ship. Now, Whitebeard, taking a sort of frustrated note of Odin's tenacity, then came up with a bit of a deal as he said, all right, it's pirate time, which means that we play by my pirate rules. Rule number one, Odin, you're an idiot. Rule number two, I like idiots. So rule number three, if you manage to survive being dragged for three days, then I will let you do the thing it is that you want to do. And so Odin began the most grueling liquid-based torture of his life so far. It's very important to note the so far. And Odin lasted almost exactly three days, but with less than an hour to go, he let go, but for good reason, because a nearby very attractive time traveler was in trouble and Odin promptly floated to her rescue. And Whitebeard, not wanting to seem like a prick, then decided to alter the deal and invited Odin along with his new time traveling friend, Toki aboard. Also the cat and the dog snuck aboard and Izo is also there. So for the next four years, Odin and the rest would relentlessly adventure with the Whitebeard pirates. He would often entertain the crew with his stand-up comedy routine consisting of the pun, I am Odin and I was born to boil. And it's funny because his name is Soup. And Odin was so fantastic at general pirating that he even became a second division commander of the crew and also became like a brother to Whitebeard himself as opposed to a son. Although speaking of sons, Odin had a literal one of those as his special nighttime game with Toki would produce not only a son, but also a daughter named Momonosuke and Hiyori respectively. This was everything that Odin wanted, but things were about to get a lot more complicated. On an unknown day on an unknown island, two very well-known crews would collide. The Whitebeard Pirates, led by the Whitebeard, obviously, came into conflict with the Roger Pirates, also led by the man whose name is in the crew name. Odin himself attempted to, you know, face off against Roger, but he was immediately dismissed. And Roger would go on to clash directly with Whitebeard for three days and three nights, until, assumedly, everyone either got bored, tired, hungry, or all three. Because the two crews then sat down for a delightful picnic, which I think is nice. But this is where Roger would rather unceremoniously pull down his pants and take the biggest steaming law dump of Odin's life. Roger had actually wanted to meet this Odin fellow for quite some time now and revealed his discovery of the Poneglyphs, funky mystery cubes scattered throughout the world, originally made on Wano and written in a language that Odin had been taught to read. And proving that to become a king, one must first learn to bow, Roger humbly begged Odin to join his crew for the period of one year. To which Odin agreed, angering Whitebeard to the point where he quite literally summoned a tsunami of frustration. Odin then took, in this order, his son, his daughter, their mother, his cat, and his dog, but left Izo behind for, for reasons. Odin then embarked on a bit of a speed run through One Piece, hitting up all sorts of notorious hotspots, like Skypea, Fishman Island, Sabadi Archipelago, Zoe, and even Water 7, where Odin met a very young Frankie and invited the boy to become a member of the Roger Pirates. Frankie declined as politely as he could, which, which was not very. And to this day, Frankie still has probably no idea that he actually met Kozuki Odin. But with a fresh audience for his stand-up, Odin was able to whip out some old comedy gold with the classic, I am Odin and I was born to boil, which elicited fits of laughter each and every time it was said. Very contrary to the rules of comedy, it's like a joke that only gets funnier every time he says it. And Odin then completed the tour of One Piece by briefly returning to Wano to read the Poneglyph on that island. And with all of the mystery cubes found, quite specifically the four special road Poneglyphs, Odin was able to decipher the location of the final mystery island. And I think Odin words say this next part better than I ever could. On that day, we learned the entire truth of the world. What the 100 year void is, what the people of D are, what the ancient weapons are. In the past, Wano was open to the world. And in the face of that vast treasure, which was very real indeed, he laughed.
and so did we all. Roger named the silent laugh tale and then disbanded the crew. And having discovered the quote, entire truth of the world, Odin then returned to Wano, now understanding its pivotal role in the future. And upon returning, Odin called a bit of a team meeting with his vassals where he explained that, all right, vassal people, I, Odin, have returned. And I like what you've all done with your various hair, but we have got some work to do. We've got 20 years to clean up this country and open it up to a man that I have never personally met. But trust me, he's gonna do some real cool stuff. And as part of this, it's really important that no one betrays us. So Kandra, I think I'm gonna put you in charge of that. But before Odin could set things into motion any further, he came to a very sudden realization. During the time that Odin had, quite frankly, abandoned Wano, it had been usurped by future Emperor of the Sea Kaido and the new Shogun of Wano, Orochi. But mostly Kaido, Orochi was also there. Now Odin was less than pleased with this news and after a bit of a vicious kerfuffle, managed to strike a deal with Orochi, whereby Odin was going to dance naked every day for five years, and in exchange, Orochi would not kill the hundreds of hostages he'd taken. It's not an amazing deal, but also Odin asked for some ships so that they could all eventually set sail and open up Wano, preparing for all of the joy boy business, you know? And so Odin danced merrily and nakedly for five years until Orochi decided to alter the deal and give Odin absolutely nothing except a bit of a metaphorical kick in the beanbag. Finally deciding that, you know, enough was enough, Odin resolved to strike down Kaido and free Wano. Unfortunately, he was about five years too late. By this time, Kaido had long since consolidated his power, making it nigh on hopeless for Odin and his vassals to achieve victory. Despite this, Odin's attack almost worked until it didn't, and he was imprisoned as well as sentenced to execution alongside his vassals. Odin's method of execution was chosen due to it being the most sadistic option that Orochi and Kaido's brainstorming session produced, and he was sentenced to boil in a pot of oil until a state of death had been achieved. But Odin, seemingly not having learned from his various deal-making experiences, decided then to strike a deal with Kaido. The conditions were that he and his nine vassals would all hop in the pot at the exact same time, and if any of them survived past a time stipulated by Kaido, then they would be absolved and free to go. And Kaido, highly tickled by the thought of watching people desperately trying to survive the unsurvivable, set a time limit of one hour. And in what is quite possibly the most tragic, emotional, and yet greatest show of physical and mental endurance in the series, only Odin subjected himself to the boiling oil, holding up all nine vassals on a plank for the full time limit, which would become an event recorded in history as the Hour of Legends. The temperature inside this pot was said to surpass 700 degrees. The manga doesn't clarify whether that's Fahrenheit or Celsius. However, the anime does state that it's Celsius, AKA the hotter one. I mean, either way is bad, but this is much worse. However, this act solidified Odin's legacy to all those observing, making clear that he was indeed the hero and Orochi was the not that. Odin and his vassals would survive the whole hour. He kept up his part of the deal, but say it with me. Then in a twist, Orochi altered the deal. One minute before the time limit was up, Orochi changed the method of execution to firing squad. After which point Odin said, you know what, F it, and then threw his vassals in the general direction of freedom, giving them one last command, which was to open the borders of Wano. Odin himself remained in the pot with his final words being, my name is Odin and I was born but not even Odin's death could stop the completion of his A material with the crowd finishing his famous line to boil. Odin's body fell into the pot of oil with an ominous smile, knowing that 20 years from now, Kaido would be defeated and the world would enter a new dawn, thus ending the story of the man who was born to boil.